So in the last video, we talked about the 30-60-90 ratio. We looked at some similar triangles, did a quick example problem, talked about the SAT a little bit. And in this video, we're going to do something very similar, but this time we're going to be discussing a different set of values. And this set of values is for the 45-45-90 right triangles that you might be encountering. So if you look at my base triangle over here on the left side of the screen, it's clearly a right triangle. We've got a 45 degree angle, another 45 degree angle. Well, if, if a triangle has two angles that are the same value, two angles that are congruent, it's also going to have two sides that are congruent and it's going to end up being an isosceles triangle. So if you look at the values of these side lengths, we've got one and one as the base side lengths for the legs. And then we've got square root of two for the hypotenuse. You can double check the Pythagorean theorem here. If you take this squared plus this squared, squaring one just keeps it a one. So this squared plus this squared is just going to be two. That's got to equal C squared, right? The hypotenuse squared. Well, if I take the square root to solve for the hypotenuse, I get square root of two. So this set of values satisfies the Pythagorean theorem. That kind of confirms for us that, yep, it's definitely a right triangle. These values, although this isn't a whole number, these values do form a Pythagorean triple. Uh, and so the base ratio for a 45, 45, 90 right triangle is something that I would suggest memorizing with this little sequence, one, one, square root of two. So the legs are congruent, right? It is an isosceles triangle. So the legs have the same measure. And then the hypotenuse is, is going to be whatever the legs are times a factor of square root of two. Uh, so how do we utilize this information? So if you look at this triangle that I have drawn on the right hand side of the screen, it's still a 45, 45, 90 triangle. Uh, we know that this vertical edge on the triangle measures eight units. I don't know what the bottom measure is or what the hypotenuse measure is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to use the information that we just discussed from the left hand portion of the screen in order to figure out what x and y are so there are two different ways you can do this i'm going to solve it initially by by using this proportion this this little set of ratios that we have written across that line uh, when reduced this ratio has to be equivalent to this ratio meaning they have to be proportional to each other so what i am doing is i'm using k as my constant of proportionality and I'm saying, all right, well, the, the vertical sides on these two right triangles, I've got one on the smaller triangle, the base triangle, and then I've got eight on the larger triangle. I know I should be able to multiply this smaller measure by some constant of proportionality to generate that bigger value. I'm using K to represent that constant of proportionality. And this is really easy to solve. I mean, there's not really even any reason to, 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 to do it. 1k is just k, k is equal to 8. You can divide both sides by 1 and you get 8. So the constant of proportionality to get from the smaller triangle to the bigger triangle is that we're going to be multiplying all of the side measures by 8 in order to generate the bigger lengths. Uh, what I did with this value here is, is basically the exact same thing I did in order to solve for that constant k. I realized that my measure for side x is going to be the corresponding value, which x is along the bottom edge corresponding value on the base triangle is also along the bottom edge. So that measure of one times the constant of proportionality has to give me X. Well, the constant of proportionality that we just solved for is eight. So if I do one times eight, I get my value for X. And that should make sense. This is still going to be an isosceles triangle. So if the bigger leg is measuring, excuse me, if the, if one of the legs measures eight units, then the other leg is also going to have to measure eight units because the legs have the same measure. So I guess I could have taken that shortcut, used the fact that it was an isosceles triangle to kind of bypass this. This is something you have to do with the 30, 60, 90 triangles. So it's something I also did here. It's really the only reason why I showed it. And then to find the value of the hypotenuse, uh, the hypotenuse on the smaller triangle measured the square root of two. So I realized that I was going to have to multiply that square root of two by my constant of proportionality to generate the bigger side measure, uh, which is represented with the variable y. So if I put in my constant proportionality here, eight, now it's not, eight is not under the square root, right? It's not square root of 16. It's eight outside the root times square root of two. Uh, so my value for side y is gonna be eight square root of two. If I check the Pythagorean theorem, uh, eight squared plus eight squared, that has to equal eight square root of two squared. You, you'll be able to confirm that it does. Uh, so that is, this is a right triangle. We've got the side measures that we needed. 
if you're more comfortable in using triangle similarity in the familiar way and that's setting up proportions and solving them that way, you're going to get the same answer, right? So I have the corresponding, I have the smaller side measures up here, uh, and then I am going to have the bigger side measures in the denominator. So for the vertical edge of these triangles, I had one on the smaller triangle, I had eight on the bigger triangle. So I built a ratio of those sides divided by each other. That's got to equal the corresponding ratio for the small triangle and the big triangle. So that's one on the small triangle to X, which I don't know on the big triangle. If I cross multiply here, you're going to get X equals eight that way as well. Uh, doing a similar sequence, following a similar procedure with the hypotenuse. I, I use the vertical edge still, right? So one on the small triangle, eight on the big triangle. That has to equal hypotenuse from the small triangle divided by hypotenuse from the big triangle. So if I cross multiply on this diagonal, I get y. If I cross multiply on this diagonal, I get eight squared of two. Once again, the reason why I showed it with the, the ratio written uh, with the colons initially is because when you use the unit circle, it's, it's in my opinion, a little more efficient to be able to, to follow through with the process the way that I showed it initially. But you get the same answer if you set up the proportions and solve them by cross multiplying. Last thing I want to say here before we finish this one is not what I just clicked ahead to. Sorry about that. I forgot to set this page up before I started recording. Uh, so this is something that you will find on the SAT reference sheet. So the SAT reference sheet does provide you with a 45, 45, 90 right triangle. And they tell you that these sides are going to measure the same length. They use the variable S to represent the measures of those sides. And then this side is going to be whatever S is times the square root of 2. And our ratio is definitely present here because I can put on a coefficient of 1 in front of this S. I can put on a coefficient of 1 in front of this S. So I do still see the 1, 1 square root of 2 on the legs and then the hypotenuse of the triangle. Uh, they have basically used the variable S similar to how I was using the constant of proportionality K a few minutes back within the video here. So there's some constant of proportionality. In this case, they've called it S. And if you multiply the base ratio, 1, 1 square root of 2, by that constant of proportionality, you generate the sides of a new triangle, either bigger or smaller than the base triangle. So hopefully you'll find a way to use this as you begin to make your way into using the unit circle. And that will be something that we talk about in the very near future.